umphakomo amaqadi dosina ukube ngcuka insimbisa that is called uzithutha what does that mean uzithutha is closer for tracing back your lineage so when you're answering the question of who am i you start going back and listing the clan names your clan names and going back as far back as you can and that is what uzithutha means um when i was a child i never quite understood why my tribe had to be so complicated just say your name right but when i left home at 20 years old and moved to the states it is only then that i began to understand what exactly that was about it beca it became clear to me that who you are has more to do than just your birthday or the names that your parents gave you knowing your ancestral lineage shapes your identity owning it opens a door that unleashes a power for you to thrive in your life so today i want to explore identity the power in understanding it and how you might come to find it because when you know who you are you unlock the power to thrive in your life when you know who you are you choose occupations that serve you and walk away from relationships that don't when you know who you are no one can just come and tell you that you are weak useless talentless or whatever else they decide to impose on you because you are clear exactly who you are tell me that doesn't sound like power no absolutely okay <laughs> It is the difficult circumstances that I faced as a child that instigated a curiosity in me that also launched the investigation into who I was. At 13 years old, I lost my grandparents. Um and they raised me. They were the only parents I ever really knew. At 13 years old, I was in mourning. Everything I thought I knew was suddenly upended. and there was no support coming from anywhere so the safe world that i'd come to know had suddenly become this foreign concept what was i to do who was i in this situation who was i going to be to survive the situation and that is how finding myself began it would be a few years before i could really answer the question but endeavoring to answer that question has led to the success in my life's work as a performer and a writer which is also what i believe connects me to my audiences because i believe that all people recognize authenticity and support it some famous people i think really embody this people like oprah lauren hill nelson mandela some not so famous people my late grandmother this woman did not care if she was the only parent in the neighborhood who would not allow me to have a sleepover she was clear that no child of hers was going to sleep over anywhere unfazed by the vitriol that i might have dished out on her she was clear about who she was and this is what it was going to be are you still with me So before I continue, I want to say a little bit about me in case you're wondering who is this woman talking about this clickety clack. I am born and bred from South Africa. South Africa has 11 official languages. Um and each language represents a tribe. I am from the Xhosa tribe. I moved to New York in 2008. and how just about any typical job a struggling artist might hold teller personal assistant server you name it i've done it and today i am proud to say that i am a published author i am an artist i am a singer i am a speaker i am an actress and i am open 
to what more the universe has for me. During the early months of my arrival in the United States, I somehow managed to make friends. So I had this one friend, Fabiola Berci. She had invited me to this little soiree in the city. So I put myself together with the no budget that I had at the time, looked as cute as I possibly could with my no budget, and went to the soiree. So I'm mixing and I'm mingling and I'm talking. And eventually I end up talking to this older gentleman. I would say he was maybe in his early 50s. Early 50s, late 50s maybe. Um, older black gentleman. So we're talking and he's asking me, where are you from? And I tell him I'm from South Africa. And he's like, oh. Um, when did you get here? How long have you been here? So I tell him I've only been here a few months. And he says, okay. So then he squints his eyes and looks at me from top to bottom and then says, ha, I give you one year and that natural hair will be gone. Excuse me? This is what I'm thinking. And then he hurries away before I even have a chance to ask him, well, what do you mean? So he leaves, and I'm left wondering, well, what exactly did he mean by that? Did he know something that I didn't know? Would I contract cancer and lose my hair? Would I donate it voluntarily? Impossible, because I don't have much. Was he suggesting that my identity was connected to my hair, implying that if I decided to straighten my hair after this year, I had then sold myself out. I had fallen into the traps of the Western, world, Western ways and therefore sold myself out. It made me want to answer the questions, was my hair connected to my identity as a black woman, as a woman? as a human. So I had to go back. Why did I go natural? I decided to go natural in high school. At the time, and it still is, I had decided to go natural because I was sick and tired of having my hair and my scalp burned by chemicals. Really, that was, <laughs> I'll take a click for that. I'm <laughs> you know. That was really the only reason. And inadvertently, it also helped because I didn't have to spend money on relaxes. Now, I don't know if you know how much these things cost, but they're expensive. And that's why I decided to go natural. So then I realized that my decision had nothing to do with my identity. It had to do with money and chemicals. I realized that I did not associate my Africanism or my identity for that fact with the state of my hair. I didn't need to wear a head wrap or traditional garb or anything of the sort to be more black or more African. Whether my hair is braided, colored, straightened, permed, I'm still black. You will know I am a proud black woman, not because of what I'm wearing, not because of how my hair is done, not because of the clothes I'm wearing. You will know I am a proud black woman because I simply am. And that energy, you will pick it up. The lesson here is that you do not need to do or put on something to represent yourself. Knowing who you are is enough. Judy Garland, I think the reward for conformity is that everyone likes you except yourself. Oprah Winfrey, highest honor on earth is being yourself. In high school, I was never part of the cool group, nor was I part of the uncool group. I was sort of floating in between. I was an avid reader and very curious. And I really paid attention to people I admired. People like Oprah, Maya Angelou, Ian Lavansant. 
I wanted to know how these women had figured it all out. Because I was trying to figure it all out. I was trying to figure myself out. Here were women who didn't fit the mold of TV personality. They weren't skinny white women. They weren't white looking. They had flat noses. They just didn't fit the mold and yet they were thriving and had claimed their spot in society. I wanted to know how did they do it? Which is why I paid attention. I learned that it is easier and more fruitful to be yourself from these women. Which is why I was able to come to school, in high school, with a big old afro. And at the time, all you ever saw in high school, you either had your hair permed or braided. Anything that was outside of that, oh girl, what's going on? I showed up, they laughed, but I was able to withstand the laughter and the finger pointing because I wanted, I was clear that I'm enough. <coughs> Excuse me. Before I continue, I recently found out that I have allergies, really bad ones. So sometimes I'm gonna sound like I'm choking, but I'm not. It's just the pollen. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So I realized that being myself was enough. And the same people that would finger point and laugh today, next week, showed up with an afro. The same people that would finger point and laugh when I had cut my hair, all of my hair, would show up with their hair cut. Even the people who had no business cutting their hair. And the problem is, <laughs> they saw how comfortable I was with myself. And when you're comfortable with yourself, there's a beauty that emanates from that. And they were looking for that. But what they didn't realize was that they were not going to get it by doing what I was doing. They had to get it by doing what they needed to do for themselves. As a performer in the entertainment industry, where there is constant pressure and persuasion to fit the mold to succeed, understanding that I am enough has been the foundation of my work as a writer and a performer. Your authentic self is an asset that cannot be duplicated and arguably the most marketable, in my humble opinion. How I serve my community is through the original expression of myself. It is how I'm able to connect with audiences because I truly believe that authenticity is attractive and people support it. When you have an understanding of who you are, you are able to connect with people in a profound way that in turn enriches your own life on this earth. How do you find yourself? Relationships, schools, churches, solitude, uh, meditation and prayer, all these things can teach you about yourself, but you need to be open to receiving this information. Your existence is rooted in something deeper than you. This is why services like 23andMe and Ancestry DNA, you know those services, right? This is why they're so successful because people yearn to find out where they come from because they know that knowing where I come from will lead to a better understanding of who they are today. Black people, I have to talk about black people because I'm black. Whether you are African or African American, our roots teach us about a history of kidnapping, slavery, oppression, humiliation. But if you go back even further, we were a people of rulers. From Mali's king Mansa Musa, who ruled between 1312 and 1337, whose wealth was estimated to be around $400 billion today, to Shaka Zulu, the king of Zulus in South Africa. He invented the Asagai, a stabbing spear, and united all the tribes in South Africa from oppression from the European colonial rule, to the queens Nzinga of Angola, who formed her own army against the Portuguese 
battles that went on for 30 years, and all the way to the Queen of Sheba, who traveled a long and arduous journey to seek wisdom. Why is it important for us to know this? It's important to know this because my spirit as a black woman, as a black person, is steeped in royalty, innovation, resilience and spirituality despite the oppression that followed. You cannot hold me back by telling me that I cannot do something because of this or the other because I'm clear about who I am. I am from kings. I am from queens. So when I say aka Nona the poet, aka Nono, also known as the queen, I understand that I really am from kings and queens. As a writer and a performer, I tell stories that come from a place of truth and honesty with an intention to leave an audience elevated at the very least, whether it be healing, entertaining, or meditation, I want you to get something. And because I'm clear about who I am, I can divinely and effectively serve my society. So if there's anything of value I can leave with you today, if you're unsure of what your life's purpose is, if you are in an unsavory relationship, or you're one of those people that go where the wind blows, the first thing you need to do is figure out who are you. Knowing this will tell you where next to go. You will never be done learning about yourself because as you experience new things you learn new things about yourself but you do need to know at the very least who you are Aristotle said knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom so start with yourself and see what wonderful doors open for you and since you were sitting here right now you have already begun to do that. I am going to perform a few pieces from my book and stuff not from the book. Uh, Soul Vagina, In Between Sex and God, Who Am I? And we will get to know each other a little bit more. And um, if that's okay with you, let me hear you say all right. All right. All right. That is okay. All right, so let's uh, let's get into it.